Good evening. This is the um, public service meeting on Monday, May 10th. My name is uh, Councillor Tallman, the, the chairman. To my right is Councillor Bartley. And shortly joining us uh, is Ward 2 Councillor Will Puello. Welcome, Will. And this meeting is being recorded. It also is streamed and uh, it is on the uh, live station, Channel 15. Yeah, I don't know. There's a little bit of it. Could we check with uh, the, the volume on this? It seems like there's a little uh, echo. Oh, yeah. You can just mute it right here, I think, right? Where's it right here? Listen, you're, you're dealing with a competent yeah. person here. No, well, you guys are very confident in my job. Oh, look at that. Someone okay. stole my mic. There you go. Uh, yeah, he's got it. Yeah. Okay. We okay? Um, good job. Thank you for that. All right. Um, uh, you want a motion, Pete? Yes. Uh, take a motion to take uh, number one, agenda item one off the table. I'll second. So moved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, I believe, uh, I'm not sure. Oh, yeah, we do have her here. Um, this is uh, subject to approval. I hereby appoint the following individual to serve as member of the Library Board of Directors for the City of Holyoke, Dr. Tiffany B. Curtis of 285 Hamden Street. Dr. Curtis will replace Mr. Jason Lefebvre and will serve as remainder term. Said term will expire in February 2023. Good evening, Tiffany. Uh, as Good we evening. Thank you for having me here. Great to have you here. As we always do, we just uh, if you could give us a little uh, background of you and uh, uh, how long you've been in the city and uh, the, the work you've done and experience, and uh, we'll have a couple questions for you. But thanks for, uh, thanks for being here tonight. Yes, again, thank you for having me. So my name is Dr. Tiffany Curtis. I am a resident of Holyoke. Um, I came to the city in 2017 to work for Holyoke Public Schools. I initially came as a school supervisor and I supervised a cluster of schools there. Uh, before I left the district, I was the chief of schools. So I was over um, all the schools in the district and helped supervise the principals. Um, I also sit on the board for Holyoke Lighthouse, um, and I just, I, I mean, I love Holyoke. I, I, um, although I don't work for the district anymore, I work in Hartford, Connecticut. I did not want to leave the city. I really, um, I like the community and um, definitely uh, was connected to the work there um, through the public school system. I've been an educator since 1992 and I've worked across the country starting from California, New York, Nevada, Massachusetts, and now Connecticut. Super, so uh, cross country just about to you in, in education, that's awesome. Uh, any uh, questions of the committee? I'll just ask quickly. Yeah. Uh, thank you, uh, thank you Tiffany, for, uh, for for being able to step up and volunteer for this really important board. Tiffany, have you been to any uh, board meetings? And if you haven't, that's okay. But do, do you know how the, the the board directors works at the for for the for the, for the city library? Yes, I've been to every board meeting up until tonight, um, and I had a work conflict, which is why I'm not in the board meeting right now. There's a board meeting tonight actually happening right now. That's wonderful. And, and tell, tell me about what, why you're interested in, uh, in serving on the, on the library board. Um, so with my work with Holyoke Public Schools, we accessed uh, the meeting space often and the library often for just our work um, in the community, in the school system, for our trainings, for visibility. Um, my experience with the um, library it's, it's always been super accommodating and the space just in general has been very open and welcoming to um to the, the the residents of the city and since i've been on the board i've had insight into really all the things that the the board does and the way it's connected to the community and pulls the community into the uh, library space so i would say i'm interested in being on the library board because I'm an educator um, and uh, literacy and access for children for me is very important. Um, so I, I believe that I have the skills and the background and the, um, you know, just the, mm, 
ideas that would help connect um, the board, uh, the library, even more to the community and the things that we need. Well, Tiffany, that's great because uh, the more ideas you can bring, I think the the, the, the more valuable you're going to be to the uh, to the board. I I, I want uh, I want to hear more from you uh, after you're appointed, and, and I hope you'll come back and visit us in in a few months or a year or whatever it is, and give us the uh, pros and cons of uh, the library board because it's really important for us to get your perspective, if you if you would. That's it for Absolutely. me. Absolutely, I'd like the invitation. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, I'm ready for a motion. Mr. You all said, uh, yeah. I just want to state that, that thank you for stepping up, Tiffany. And it is important, as Councilor Bartley stated. Uh, sometimes we appoint people to these different boards, and we don't hear from them afterwards. And I, I think it's part of it. We have to connect with you too. So, um, but we do want you to keep us informed of any issues uh, uh, because you know the the library is an, an important function of the city here, and uh, education, of course, uh, uh, and of our our school children is important. So, um, we hope you, that you will keep in touch with us, and uh, we will be uh, hopefully looking forward to hearing from you in the in the future. I'll take Thank a motion. You. Uh, motion to uh, recommend uh, Tiffany Curtis for uh, appointment to the board to the full council. I'll yeah. second that. Yeah. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? No. Thank you, Tiffany. And uh, we'll be bringing this to the uh, full uh, council next week. I don't see an issue. Um, thank you for stepping up, and I appreciate uh, your service to the city. Nice to meet you. My pleasure. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to remove uh, item number two from the table. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Um, Dear council members, I hereby appoint the following individual to serve as member of the Commission on Disabilities for the City of Holyoke, Ms. Sarah Wedeman, 28 Howard Street. Ms. Wedeman will replace Mary L. Morris and will serve a three-year term. Said term will expire in March 2025. Sarah? Yes. Welcome. Uh, and as you heard earlier, um, we just want to get a little background of you. Um, you where you're from, how long you've been in Holyoke, uh, what your experience is, and, and why you want to serve on the Commission of Disabilities. Um, yes, sure. Um, so I'm from, lived in Holyoke since 2008. Um, I came here and uh, worked as um, American Sign Language interpreter first when we moved here um, full time for the Bay State Health System. So I have um, experience with the deaf community and serving a large uh, community in this area. Um, and then when my youngest children were born, um, I uh, became a, um, a full-time caregiver to my youngest child who has um, severe cerebral palsy. And um, so I have also the perspective of being a family member and a full-time caregiver of somebody who has to access the health systems and uh, the community in a different way. Um, so my professional life has been very involved with um, uh, disabilities rights and advocacy and my personal life is also um, very uh, enmeshed with the rights and advocacies of the disability community. Thank you so much. Appreciate that, Sarah. Uh, any uh, comments or questions from the council? Yeah, council I'll, Barley? Uh, yeah. I'll, uh, well, first of all, nice to meet you, and thank you for uh, for being here. And uh, that's a beautiful sound in the background. Uh, uh, so. so, so, so so Sarah, one of the, I just want to follow up on the similar question. Have you been to any meetings for the Commission on Disabilities uh, to date? If you haven't, that's fine, but I'm just curious if you kind of have, have met the chair and if you kind of have some information as to your duties and obligations. I have not been to any meetings yet. Um, I, I do have a friend who was recently um, appointed to the committee or is about to be appointed to the committee who has given me a sort of heads up and I talked with the mayor. Um, I haven't yet met with the chair of the committee, um, but I am not doing a lot in person yet because uh, my son's medical conditions. I'm still doing a lot of remote work. Um, okay, and, so it, I, and Mr. Uh, chair, I, I yeah. point, just a point of order. I think we appointed Lynn. Yeah, Lynn Haran. Lynn, Lynn Haran. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we just we just did that, and then. Yes. Um, okay. Yeah. And so Lynn's Lynn's a, certainly going to be a, a valid a, a valuable. Um, asset and I based upon your background I, I'm, I'm I'm very confident in your skills and ability and so what I 
Well, one of the things we, we don't, we, you know what we hear, you know what I hear from, from the Disability Commission? Do you want to guess? It, it, it's for, it's for, it's for, a, it's for a, a handicap placard for parking. That, yes, that, I've heard that. Yeah. That is essentially it. And I'm just curious as to know, I mean, I know there's a lot more that happens. Mm. And, and there's a lot of important work that can that is being done and can be done, and so that's something that I would love to hear more uh, from from your perspective. And, and you have, once you're appointed, uh, certainly you can send communications or send minutes or or reach out to a counselor or through the mayor to us if you feel more comfortable that way, and and give us your your perspective on what's going right and maybe what could be a little bit better. So I hope you'll consider that. Yeah, I'd love to. I think there's a lot that we can do to make Holyoke a more accessible place for all of our citizens. Um, and um, anything that we do to make it more accessible benefits everybody. Yeah. So there's there's no wrong way to be more accessible. Yeah, I, th I think Lynn was talking about making parks more accessible. Yeah. And uh, yeah. if I remember right, there's, Mr. Chair, I think there's, I think there's a couple of walking tours of the, some of the parks and maybe not this weekend but the following weekend maybe vets vets park and anniversary and then uh the glue tech and all that and yep. so that that's that's a way to put put it in perspective and now maybe maybe sarah might have another another take on it maybe her her strong suit will be you know something else other than parks so um so anyway uh, so thanks uh for being here and and for your willingness to to support the city by this volunteer effort thank you mr chair thank you well yeah, it's nice to meet you. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah, for stepping up. And, and we do uh, want you to keep in touch with us as, as uh, the months and years go on. And, and I, I see you got a, a great perspective on on the, on the city and what we can do to, to make things better in the city. Um, as Councilor Bartley said, sometimes uh, we hear from them uh, just about the, the handicapped parking. But I know there's a lot that the, the, the Council on Disabilities does. And, um, you know, one of them is the parks. And I believe right up by your area at Highland Park, they're going to be doing a um, uh, they're doing a brand new uh, playgroundscape for people with disabilities. I believe um, right in that area. I think either this year or next year. So which would be really great for for the community. Um, but um, well, don't forget the, the the Miracle League. That's what in the Miracle. It, it, yeah, it's coming to, to Kenny Field. So yeah. yeah, Kennedy. Kennedy. Is it Kenny? Ken Kennedy, I think. Okay. Yeah, where well, we just planted okay. the trees. Yeah, so, yeah, the Miracle League, yeah. they're coming. And that's that's going to be uh, amazing, and that's going to be great for, for the community, um, for everybody in the community to, to utilize. So, But um, I, we thank you for your time. Thank you for uh, stepping up and volunteering uh, with your work and with your experience. I think you'll be a great, um, definite asset to the, uh, to the city of Hoyoke on this board. Um, I'll take a motion for the council. I'll make a motion to, that we uh, recommend uh, Sarah to the full city council to be appointed to this board. Uh, Commission. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, uh, Sarah. We're going to bring this forward to the, uh, the full council next uh, Tuesday night, and um, I wish you well, and thank you again for stepping up uh, to serve the city. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Uh, Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion to take agenda item three off the table. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Dear council members, subject to your approval, I hereby reappoint the following individual to serve as member of the Library Board of Directors for the City of Holyoke, Ms. Kelly Curran, uh, 230 South Street. Ms. Curran will serve a three-year term. Said term will expire in February 2025. Uh, to my committee members, we um, I had talked to Kelly on this issue because since she is the, um, the personnel director um, of our, our city, um, right now um, she thought it would be best to, to not accept this uh, position this volunteer position but uh she wanted me to you know say she's going to contact the ethics commission and and to see if the, it's something that maybe later on in the date that she could uh, possibly do so um i was asked to uh, have this um item leave to withdraw yeah i'll make a motion and give a leave to withdraw without prejudice second all in favor aye, aye. aye. that item is leave to withdraw without prejudice thank you so much uh, make a motion to take agenda item four off the table, Mr. Chair. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Item four, I just want to notice uh, that also we have our law department, Mike, attorney Mike Bissonette here on Zoom, and Jose Maldonado-Velez is here also on Zoom. 
This is an uh, order by our good friend, our former counselor James M. Lay, or that committee be formed called the Tourism Advisory Committee. The scope of the committee is to create and market a new brand for Holyoke and initiate permit reforms for public event for events, public gatherings, beautification, and public art. Annually monitor and report the progress of tourism initiatives for the mayor and city council. Review infrastructure maintenance program. Coordinate business communications and Holyoke tourism opportunities into one marketing effort. Establish and support signature destinations and districts such as the Puerto Rican Cultural District on Main Street and the Canal District. Promote ecotourism and outdoor recreation. Make recommendations for financial and human resources plan. Recommend annual updates to the Holyoke Tourism Strategic Plan. The committee will utilize the Holyoke Tourism Strategic Plan. The committee will from time to time update and revise the plan as they find necessary. The committee should compromise, comp comprise one representative appoint, appointed by each of the following agencies, the Holyoke Local Cultural Council, Greater Holyoke Chamber of Commerce, Greater Springfield Convention and Visitors Bureau, Holyoke Office of Planning and Economic Development, Holyoke City Council, Holyoke Historical Commission, and Wisteria Hearst Museum. A minimum of five and up to eight at-large members will be nominated and recommended by the committee and appointed by the mayor for a three-year term. Um, I did ask for the law department to uh, put an ordinance together. Um, they did file, if you have it in your packet, there is an ordinance here. Um, on the back, though, I just did want to amend it um, with that last um, part of the last paragraph to uh, amend it to say a minimum of five and up to eight at-large members will be nominated and recommended by the committee and appointed by the mayor for a three-year term on the last part here. It was somehow left off of the, um, the ordinance. Okay, so you want to make that a motion? Make that a motion you want to, make to that amend motion? that, eight? yes. Uh, so you want to say it again? Um, I make a make amend this and make a motion to add on uh, the after she uh, the Wisteria Museum that a minimum of five and up to eight at large members will be nominated and recommended by the committee and appointed by the mayor for a three year term. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, we have our uh, Holyoke uh, Economic Planning Economic Development Chair here, uh, Aaron Vega. Uh, to discuss this item. Good evening. Good evening. Hey, how's it going? Good. It's going good. Excellent. So, um, yes, yeah, so you have the order in front of you. Uh, thank you for that for that amendment. Uh, that that is in the uh, original uh, points, and of course in the bylaws that the committee would be abiding by. Um, just a couple quick notes. Really think about this like the Bike Pet Advisory Committee, very similar to the Bike and Pedestrian Advisory Committee, um, which was formed because of Complete Streets. Um, again, they don't have any sort of, uh, I don't want to downgrade their importance of, of advisory committees, but obviously they, they're not the Planning Board or the HRA or Historic Commission. They don't have any of those sort of authorities or powers, right? So I just want to be, be clear on that. Um, and this is part of our 2019 tourism plan. Uh, which obviously was stalled because of COVID, uh, but as you can tell, a lot of stuff has already been going on. When you read that list of things uh, that this uh, committee would be looking at, uh, obviously we are looking at doing things currently. We're looking, at, we're working with PBPC, Pioneer Valley Planning Commission, on a historic tourism plan or heritage tourism, which it's often called as well. Um, that is in the works right now. Obviously, I hope that you've heard uh, that we're doing Restaurant Week, uh, mm -hmm. June 6th through the 13th. Or, um, and that, uh, again, came out of the, the work that the larger stakeholders group has been doing and our restaurant roundtable group. Um, we have an Explore Holyoke website that's hopefully going to launch maybe the 23rd of this month, maybe the 25th, but hopefully the 23rd. Um, uh, and that, that is uh, being uh, developed right now as we speak. Um, and then, of course, um, this office is also, our office is also working on a marketing uh, plan, uh, sort of a three-year plan, if you will, and we, we're going to submit something to either be funded by the ARPA funds or by cannabis funds. So, because um, we recognize, I think, that there's been a lot of support and talk about marketing for the city. We also recognize the budget constraints that the city has. Um, and so things like ARPA funding, once in a generation funding, but also the cannabis impact fee uh, could definitely be used for a position like that. 
our goal, my goal right now is to sort of set the table, if you will, right? There's the tourism plan, the historic tourism plan, a new website, events like Doors Open, Restaurant Week, obviously all the events that go on already in the city. It's already set up. So at some point, if we have someone full time, um, they're just taking it to the next level. Until then, hopefully we could utilize either ARPA or cannabis funds to have that position um, moving forward. The last two things I'll just mention, and then obviously any, open to any questions. Uh, this committee would be really great and instrumental in helping us apply for the grants, um, but also, as you know, the 150th celebration is happening next year for the city of Hoyoke. Um, discussions already started with that. Um, many of the people listed on this committee and on the larger stakeholders group are already involved, but this would kind of codify that. Um, and then the last thing I'll mention, because uh, I know it was talked about, it was mentioned last time, um, I'm going to call it the PBS video, um, oh, yeah. right? The one that the, the, the city council funded during uh, Mayor Murphy. Um, we're in touch with them. We're doing a, a one day of additional shooting. Um, I believe the first week of June, I have to check the calendar. Um, so within the next month, we're talking to them. We just wanted to kind of highlight a couple additional businesses that just sort of didn't really um, have a full flair, if you will. Uh, so it's, it's a great rough cut that they have right now. And we just wanted to get some additional voices into it. So um, we worked with um, Scott over at uh, Public Access. Right, Scott McPherson, mm -hmm. um, and so he's helping out with, with that as well. So um, our goal is to have that ready for, for uh, the fall. You know, maybe late summer, but because then since they already have a rough cut, but hopefully that'll be seeing the light of day, you know, either in August or September. So uh, things are definitely moving, uh, obviously, when it comes to tourism, and again, the city council being integral in that with the um, Puerto Rican Cultural District. district. Uh, we also, maybe you saw some of this information, but uh, Beyond Walls, the organization out of Lowell, Mass, that did all the murals there, they're actually going to be working in Hoyoke now. So this is a really great calling card oh. for us. So they're working with a couple building owners to have more public art. Obviously, it's great when we did the El Corazon project and find grants, but if another organization can come in and help out our local artists and, and address the, the infrastructure for arts uh, in the community, I think that that's really great. So we're trying to make those partnerships happen. So um, happy to answer any questions. Councilor Barley. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Uh, Aaron, thanks for coming. Absolutely. By as you always do, uh, very uh, organized and informative. Uh, Aaron, I just want to recommend a couple things yep. for the language, and then I want to make a point of order because just so the public realizes that we're not the ordinance committee. So, but yep. but, but we had talked about this a couple of meetings ago. Yep. Mm -hmm. So it's for us to pick up the ball a little bit and do a little work, and we we want to thank the law department for its uh, diligence here. So, Aaron, w one thing I don't see in this draft language is, or just two things. One is it doesn't really indicate where this committee should report. And I'd like us to think about that, and I'd like to have it have it be, you know, consider language that, that we can put in here so that the, the committee would report to the to the chair of OPED. I, I would, I'd, I'd like us to consider that for one. Absolutely. Okay, and, th and, th and I want to get your input on that, then I want to run it by obviously this committee. And second of all, I wanted to be, I wanted to say in there that the committee shall meet at least quarterly or something to that effect. I mean, sometimes committees can be, I mean, these are volunteers and I I've heard it from volunteers on various boards. Um, I mean, we, we have we have a lot of great volunteers in the city, but I mean, if you're meeting 10, 11, 12, I mean, it, at some point you get baked and you got a family, and you just heard our, our previous two. I mean, they, they've you know, one lady's working at Hartford, mm -hmm. she's gonna have to come, and then lady, another lady's got a, a little baby with CP. Right. I mean, that's, there's a lot going on. Mm -hmm. uh, and maybe at some point, the, the, the Zoom meetings, I mean, I, I, I don't know, it looks like they're gonna be ingrained, but maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe, they, maybe they come to an end. Maybe you got to show up, and so that's going to be uh, um, that's going to be a hurdle. So I, I wanted, but, but nevertheless, I, I wanted to say something to the effect that the committee should meet quarterly. Um, so in, in here, um, so that those are my two thoughts, and I just want to get your feedback on on those two thoughts. Totally agree. Um, so I will say two quick things, and also, and you know, the law department had all this material, and so we were working with them. The ordinance language that was drafted up is sort of based on the high level talking points that were given at one point 
um, back in February, I think. So it's, it's just put into legal form, which is great. We did miss that little at-large um, membership, which uh, you guys amended, so that's mm -hmm. great. In the bylaws that were drafted for this committee, oh, okay. we had them meet eight times a year. Okay. Um, so that the committee would meet eight times a year. If you want to put that in the ordinance, that is fine. Um, and yes, I agree that it probably should be defined um, where um, where they live. Um, again, in the bylaws in section two, uh, until such time as the chief marketing uh, marketer for the city is hired. The purpose of the TAC is to review and implement recommendations with the Hoyok Tourism Plan, with the Office of Plan Economic Development, and the and the Hoyok Tour and the Hoyok Tourism stakeholders. So, so it's in there. It's in the bylaws, but I, I don't disagree that probably you know I guess we would add a, a K yeah. onto these things and say that uh, this this committee is staffed by OPED. Well, sure, shall staffed report, and reports to yeah, yeah shall yeah. report to the director of OPED and his or her designee. Yep. I mean, that's usually what we. Yep. Yeah, yeah, we're good. But you know, I mean, I mean, listen, I, I don't want to put in words just for putting words. Uh, <laughs> you, you know, I mean, if it if it makes sense to you, then I want to do it. If it doesn't make sense, then I, I think yes to that one for sure. Since we're leading all the grants and whatnot in tourism, so yes. And as far as the meeting schedule, up to you guys. But again, in the bylaws, which again I can make sure you have a copy of. I thought you had it, but I definitely can, with all the paperwork you guys get, um, which I understand, I can resend it, but it is in the bylaws that they would meet eight times a year. So can, do we say in here that bylaws will be promulgated? That's do that. I, yeah. No, we don't. Okay, because that would cover it really yeah, right there. Right, yeah. Okay. So if we say OPED director and his or her designee, yep. and that and that that would be one, and then, um, so that's the motion is that we add, add the Report, she'll report to the, like I said, OPED director, his or her, that's one. And then a hand in glove with that is that the uh, uh, OPED director and his staff uh, shall from time to time create and update bylaws for this committee. That's my motion. Second. Okay, are you all right with that? I would, I absolutely, yeah, I, would just, I, would just, I would just add, just for clarity's sake, because we are in your what would be K or your first amendment yeah will be staffed by and report to OPED or his design, OPED director or designee okay. just because we want to be clear there's been some discussion about how some committees end up in my office and <laughs> it's not clear that we actually are required to staff them but we don't mind staffing them but it might okay. be good to codify that okay so so, so, so staffing and report oh. staffing by and report to so two H. two two dash four eight four we'll add a K under that yep Staffed and report to the OPED director, yep. or and or his or her designee. Yep. And then an L. And then L would be OPED director shall from time to time promulgate and amend committee bylaws. Is that okay, Aaron? That looks great. That's great, David. Thank you. Okay. So that's Thank you for that. I'll, um, can we make a? Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll second that. Yeah. Okay, the committee, you got, you're okay with that, Aaron, to put yeah, that in there? Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. And I just wanted to just make a note yeah. that uh, Councilor McGivern, Joe McGivern, is also here on Zoom. Thank you, Joe. Welcome. Uh, oh, sir. And right. ju just for a uh, point of order, Mr. Pro so what we're going to, uh, what I was, Suggest is that we report this out of committee so you can give a report at the next meeting and then we just transfer it right from right from the committee to the to ordinance I mean because they, they you know we can't do anything but the, our, our, our point was to just sort of amendment give them half a break in ordinance committee at, at least at least we, we could do some work right we got the bio. okay thanks Jeff uh, thanks right. Jeff so at least yeah. we could do some work here but ultimately it's got to go to the ordinance committee to because that those are our rules right so but I, I'll leave, I'll defer to the chair and Aaron on, I'm Aaron on that one I, I don't know what I mean to me I, I like to have a little a little presentation by the chair at next week's meeting on this and then we can immediately just forward it to them yeah just send it to the ordinance committee with with the legal legal language you have any issues with that? No, no, no I mean that's again. That's up to you. I think that that if that's what has to happen, if this committee, yeah, I don't. I mean, I was, I was wondering that too because I know, you know, sidebar for a second, we were having other conversations about whether or not the council decides to do it or not. Other committees being formed, 
It was like, are these the working committees, which may make sense, and then it still has to go to ordinance, which is fine. Ordinance is more like the T's are crossed, the I's are dotted. This we're not necessarily going to go into the content, but it's been vetted by another committee. I think that's fine if we have to. Yeah. Yeah, our rules say. Yeah, we, to, to, yeah, to, 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 we, we to can't. Yeah. Yeah, we have to send it to, to send ordinance to committee. Yes, yeah. yeah, so it has to be voted right. out of ordinance. Yeah, and I'll be happy to go to the But we just, but we just want to. You know, give them a little hand yeah. because this kind of fits in this committee but if we're yeah, going to get an ordinance it really belongs there yeah. so but this will this will make that meeting yep hopefully quick. hopefully a little smoother <laughs> and if we can have that i mean i've talked to jeffrey we can have those those three items that we amended put together so we can have that to give to them yep, for next week and i think the law department's on here so i'll, yeah, I'll, follow, I'll follow back up with them tomorrow too. yeah my uh mike bissonette is on here but if he could do that that way we'll send them. I, I just don't Want it to take too long because I mean, here the summer's coming, and I'd like to mm. move it along. I know ordinance got a lot of stuff going on, yeah, and uh, yeah, a lot. <laughs> it's not nonstop, but um, yeah, it's not stop. It, and I know hopefully they could take this up uh, because we got you know June budget hearings, and then we take a break in yeah. July, and so I you know I mean, I know we still have committee meetings during the summer, but I just don't Whenever want this. Whenever it gets to, done, we'll put the press release out. So absolutely, <laughs> you know, that's it, and I'd like to get this this moving. So um, we'll do that. So um, um, if uh, attorney uh, Bissonette, welcome. Could you uh, get that together, those uh, amendments, and, and talk to uh, Mr. Vega and possibly get that to us uh, for the next Tuesday's meeting? That way we could send it right Absolutely. over to ordinance. Yeah. We'll see if we can get a revised draft for the ordinance committee meeting tomorrow night. Well, uh, no. yeah, you, you can't okay. do that, Mike, because it's, yeah. it's not before them. It hasn't come through city council. Uh, I, I know we could transfer it to them, but it, Linda's got a full plate. Yeah. So I w if I may, Mr. Chair? Yeah. I, I would just throw the chair to to, to the law department, My, uh, Mike. I'd rather I'd rather if, if we could just add that K and L under two four eight four, and then and send it to the yes. chair and then send it to the chairman, and then he can make that part of his committee report, and then and then and then he, we can transfer that next Tuesday. Next Tuesday to the to the ordinance committee. Does that make sense, Mike? Very good. Okay. I appreciate Happy that. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks Mike. so much. Sure. And that other part, though, the five to eight years. And that, yeah, the, the the member yeah, that would be uh, H after the uh, after the G with the uh, member of the five. Yeah, so there's there's actually three amendments. Three amendments, yeah, five and up to eight. That'd be great. Um, okay, so uh, yeah, I, I got one real quick. Any questions? Yeah, yeah. I just just real quick, I wanted to ask about uh, letter D here to review the infrastructure maintenance program. Who does that now? Who reviews the infrastructure maintenance program now? I mean, our, Just, our, our city engineer, and I would probably say the um, the mayor has a working. We meet. I think we meet monthly, or it might be biweekly, on all the city projects. Mm -hmm. and it's led by the city engineer, so it's just it's a list of all the ARPA funded projects. It's a list of mass dot projects, CDBG projects. So like sidewalks, just, roads. Yeah, exactly. Thanks. Yeah. Sure. And again, they wouldn't have they would not have a vote on this. They would just be very similar to how the again very similar to how the bike ped committee works with the city engineer on very similar mm. the complete streets program and you know what other projects are going on. They just like to be informed. Yeah, again, so they're not going to really be like recommending prioritizing right. anything. Or, right. Cool. Or it's you know it'd be good for this. Like so today we just we've been starting. I think that Mayor Murphy started this and Mayor Garcia has continued it and it's it's I think it's really good. Today we met with three different groups about events, um, and so we're meeting. It's almost like a pre-op meeting. So we got the fire department, the police department, OPEDs there, licensing's there, um, and it would be good for a committee like this to say, "Oh yeah, you guys want to close down Chestnut Street? Okay, great, have fun." But then you turn out it's going to be an infrastructure project there, or the canal's closing. You know, right. the canal's going to be drained. You don't necessarily want three thousand people on Ray Street having a you know, concert when the canals are drained, which happened a few years ago, and it has, oh, well. you get used to the smell after a little bit. But you know, <laughs> so just a little coordination, uh, which is why I think we've really been working on this this last year is trying to have more coordination. Thank you. Yep. Councilor Barley. Uh, no, I, I yeah yeah. yeah uh, I know. I, I think that's a great question by uh, by Will, and it does that was the answer I wanted to hear. So I'm all set. Okay. The only other item I noticed, and and, and here is C. And I know um, Councilor Bradley brought up who to report to, but it does say um, under C, annually monitor and report the progress of the initiatives to the mayor and the city council. So we'll get a regular report yep. you know, from from the, yep. the committee. Yep. I think that's and I'm important. Draft, I'm drafting a report right now because we're spending the last of the money. Uh, from the 2019 mass mitigation grant that we got 
which is what we did the 2019 tourism plan. It's been the grant that keeps on giving. Uh, we did the PV, uh, the historic tourism plan. We're building a website with it. We did doors open with it, and we're promoting restaurant week with it. So $100,000 went a long way. Oh, well, that's great. Yeah. And, and the other question on, on that, um, the casino one, is that is that part of that, um, the money coming in from that, or is that something else? Is yeah, that that's the mass, mass, mitiga mass Gaming Mitigation Fund. And is that is every year for so yeah. many years we get that? Fun. No, no, we don't. No, this is a grant. Oh, it's a grant. a grant. Okay, we have to apply for. Okay, so it was it was already in my office when I came on, and so it was that was the balance. We've been using the balance. We are planning to reapply this December for next year. It okay. opens up. So okay, yeah. And and forming you said forming this um, this committee. I mean, uh, it'll be helpful to get try to get more grants. Yeah, and it's in it's in our so action that. items. It's in the action items to actually do this. So it will help us, especially when we go back to the mass, mass Gaming Mitigation Fund to say, hey, we want more money. See, we did these things as part of our first plan. These are the events we did. And so we have a good relationship with them. And so, That's great. That's great. Yep. Can I make also, a point? Yes, yeah, Mr. Barley. Yeah, Aaron, I'm really glad you brought up the Massachusetts Gaming Mitigation Fund. Hmm. Because, and I just got to go through the chair to Attorney Bissonette um, because we've been getting emails, some interesting emails relative to the the uh, impact fee for uh, for cannabis, and not so veiled threats, frankly, not so veiled, <laughs> and just to my friend Attorney Bissonette, I mean here we have potential built-in argument so this mass gaming mitigation fund is sort of serving as quelling uh, serving as an uh, impact fee I mean and this is going along well as far as we can tell and so now we're getting so if this is going along well why can't the cannabis impact fee be used I mean it's, it can be I, I think there's it's pretty broad and I think the the reason reasonability standard is pretty wide. I would say that might be a that might be a potential potential and way to sort of thwart anybody saying to city. I mean, uh, listen, we, we I don't think we can use it for something off the wall, but rel, but relative to relative to um, in, in uh, you know relative to sidewalks or relative to roads or relative to other uh, things that. Uh, need to be mitigated. Yeah. Jeez, it, it seems it, it feels to me like it could it could work, Aaron. What, what do you think? This, I, I don't disagree. I think that we're, we're we sometimes have to have days in the office where we don't talk about cannabis because it's so <laughs> over, it's so encompassing. And and, and, and attorney Bisson, that's been there with us uh, all the way. I will say that in this grant application, you do have to you do have to indicate the impacts caused by the casino to your community and thankfully even though we don't abut directly Springfield we were included in that and there was some initial money that came to us initially I think it went to the, the um, culinary uh, scholarship I don't quite know but we do have to sort of indicate that there is impact from it but you're right this is very I mean we're planning you know wayfinding can be done through this um, advertising some staffing can be supplemented with this mass gaming mitigation fund it is it is there is similarities but you do have to sort of narratively say it's because of the and it can be positive impact I think that's the other thing about impacts right we can say wow there's tens of thousands more people coming to Springfield to go to the casino we want them to come to Hoyoke while they're here for the weekend right they should come to our restaurants as well they should go to the Children's Museum right and so it's that so I think that impacts can also be seen as positive and yeah believe me the conversation on the canvas impact fee is, is uh, all consuming but you're right okay. it is, there is similar similar connotations thank you Mr. Chair Appreciate that. Um, so we'll uh, make a motion that this is uh, complied with. I'll make yes. a motion that first of all that we refer this refer to to, to uh, legal for to, to amend as as we voted on, mm -hmm. yep. and second of all that we uh, say it's been complied with the city council. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you so much. Thank you. Yep. Anytime. Thanks for your time. All right. All right. We'll get that moving. We'll try to get that moving out of ordinance too before too long. Right. Hopefully. Mr. Yeah. Chair, uh, what do you want to do? Do you want to take? We'll take up uh, number five. Mr. Chair, I'd like to remove agenda item five from the table. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Introduced by Councilor Todd McGee, ordered that uh, the mayor and city council review and approve the relocation of the department of departments to the unused space of tax collector personnel office. These spaces are facing forward-facing offices, spaces that allow better constituent 
access service. Note one consideration to remove the planning department to these spaces, which would allow constituents, businesses, easier access to the process. Um, this was uh, in the city council as of October 5th, 2021. We brought this up uh, a month ago, and I talked to Councilor McGee, the maker of the order, and um, he asked me to uh, make a motion to give this leave to withdraw without prejudice, and that uh, he will be working with the mayor and other councilors to find out uh, proper use for that space. Hmm. Okay, so just one, can I make one point? Sure, so Councilor what, Barley. So anything that has to do with any kind of uh, lease, license, conveyance, has to come through the city council. There, there's Absolutely. no way around that, right? So uh, I just wanna make sure that, it, that we just remind ourselves of that. Um, from time to time when we have the opportunity but that being said i'll uh, i'll make a motion to uh, give a leave to draw without prejudice a second all in favor all right we should take up item six second okay here we go uh introduced by council will puello and linda l Vacan ordered that the city invite el Cotason, heart of hoyo project community artist and owner of creativity art yolanda gonzalez and her artist to discuss artistic programming opportunities for youth and to present and approve upcoming art designs for fire alarm boxes located at Main and Sargent, Main and Jackson, as well as High and Hampshire Streets. And what do we got out here? We have the yard with us. Uh, so we can uh, bring that forward so the city uh, council and uh, people at Zoom and people at home can, can see these. Good, how you doing? Oh. That's okay. Don't worry about it. You're fine here. Oh, we're, all, we're all nervous, too. We're, yeah. <laughs> wow, that's beautiful. Yeah. You know what I'd like, like to have you do is, uh, can, can you sit down at that desk? That way you're comfortable and yeah, just turn yeah. the microphone on? Yeah. Oh, you got Carmen coming, too. Whoa, boy. Hi, Carmen. Come on, Carmen. I'm coming in, too. Are you going to hide behind the sign, Carmen? All right. There you go. There's a should be a button there where yeah. you can hit and turn the, the light will be green. Okay. Now are you are you Yolanda? Yes. I'm, welcome. I am Yolanda Gonzalez. Oh, welcome. I am the owner of Yolanda's Creativity Events and Art. Um, soon to be Creativity Events Mobile. That's another project in itself. Um, first of all, thank you for having me here so I can go ahead and present some of our art that I would love to do on three electrical boxes. I have already done one electrical box that was on Main and Sergeant. Is that yeah, a, is it light on there? Can you just try to speak up into the no, mic? No, I don't know if it's well, on. I apologize. Is it on? Or closer to you. Oh, thank you. I, before you go on, Yolanda, I just wanted to state that also um, on Zoom is uh, Jenny Rivera, Ward uh, One City Councilor. Nice. Hi. <laughs> Um, yeah, we have already, uh, me and some youth that, um, in the Holyoke community have already done one electrical panel. Uh, they're not artists in their own right right now. Um, I'm trying to teach them how to explore into their creativeness. And I figured out a way in order to make it easier for them to do different kind of art around the city. And that's why, and they were so excited that they accomplished that one electrical box that they wanted to do some more. And so I kind of wanted to get more of the kids in the community involved. So there's gonna be three different kind of age groups in order to do these three different electrical panels. Um, right now I'm selling art in order to get those kind of donations in order to get the art supplies in order to make this happen. And so far we have raised a lot of money in order to get this going. Um, with your permission, if we're able to do these electrical boxes, we would be super excited. The kids are not here with me today because they're super shy. I'm one of the artists that I do paint a lot of, a lot of stuff, but I'm more in the background. So I'm a little bit nervous, so I apologize to everyone. <laughs> but I'm starting to get out there. I also have um, a painting that is hanging near Fiesta Cafe uh, that 
I did for El Corazón project. I also have another installation that's coming up towards the ending of June, beginning of July for Neighbor to Neighbor. That's going to be a big installation and I'm kind of getting the kids involved in that as well. So every little art piece that I'm doing, I'm trying to get you know, the youth into it in order so they can explore their creativeness in the city of Holyoke, where I've grown up majority of my life. So I'm basically giving back. Amen. That's good. Okay, um, questions for the committee? Well, yeah. this is your order, and uh, Linda Bacon, uh, if you want to bring this up to us. Um, you, you mentioned electrical boxes, but is it fire boxes or electrical boxes? Um, it's, it's the alarm boxes. Alarm boxes. Yeah. yeah okay. not, nobody's getting shocked, you know? Yeah, okay. nobody's getting yeah. shocked. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. Because there are electrical <laughs> boxes, and I thought I saw someone else. I promise. Down yeah. on uh, Main and Cabot Street, I think there was, or somewhere in the city, I saw one. Everybody's yeah. uh, calling them electrical boxes. That's why I'm here. I'm stuck with electrical boxes. I <laughs> okay. apologize. It's the green boxes that are around in the corners. Yeah, yeah, they're fire alarm boxes. But yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. And I, I want to thank Councilor Vacant for signing on with me. I think that this is such a great order, just like she said. And I want to thank you for all the work that you do with the youth and thank Carmen for all the work that you guys do. I mean, I, I hope Jeff can, can pan in on some of these uh, on some of the pictures. I mean, look at that. Holyoke Heroes, first in, last out, firefighters, you know, and, and this is what our youth are going to be drawing. So this is going to be such a beautiful thing. And do you know which ones are going in which boxes yet, or is that to be? I do. Um, the dancer, that one is going to be on Main and Sargent. Mm -hmm. The heroes will be on High Street and Hampshire. And the Taina is going to be Main and Jackson. So far, those two, the Thanks dancer sure. and the firefighter is being donated. I just brought them here today so you guys can have a little look see of what we're what we would like to do we are gonna we would add on more designs on it i want the kids to express themselves and so i can assist them so they're gonna do a majority of the work but i'm just gonna assist like i did the last box that's beautiful that is really nice that's great, great. Job. yeah that's awesome yeah. <laughs> are we panning in jeff are we able to show those off I think he can see. Oh, did he? oh there we go. Look at that. Wow. Okay. Thank you, Jeff. I love the Heroes one. That's really. That's yeah, look at the nice Heroes one. That's yeah. just great. You yeah. Know? yeah, that one's being donated to actually the Holyoke Fire Department. That's beautiful. Oh, great. Now, I, I do have one question for the chair. I think that the fire department had to approve these, but I don't see them on. So are we able to approve No, I it? think he did, Jeff, to kind of contact oh, okay. somebody, uh, Joe O'Connor, for the fire alarm division. So I think I think they would have to get the approval for doing these, whether they're, aren't they, I think most of the fire alarm boxes are off line now, mm -hmm. but because they belong to the fire department. Yeah, before I um, was told to come here, I spoke to Maria and okay. um, she reached out to everyone else in the fire department and then um, they told me I had to come here in order to speak to you guys to present what we would like to do and to get approval from you guys. Okay. Yeah, we just have to have something from them. Um, I know Joe O'Connor, who was uh, the superintendent of the fire alarm division, um, was supposed to be on tonight. Jeffrey, is anything on, on Joe O'Connor tonight? I, I did send him the invite um, after at uh, Chief Preskopowski's suggestion. Um, he didn't respond back, so maybe, maybe he had been busy and just didn't get back to me. Okay. Um, but I, I can follow up with him. Yeah, if you could, before we uh, can uh, approve that, I mean, we, de we definitely have to have permission to yes. them. Uh, and he was the one, I know Maria, but it, he would be somebody either through the chief or through the superintendent of the fire alarm division, we'd have to get some permission to do that on the boxes. Great. If you understand, yeah. Oh, yeah. And a great, yeah. yeah. And now, how long have you been doing this uh, artwork? You've been doing it for a while? Um, I started doing artwork when I was five oh. years old. <laughs> wow, that's so something. So I've just been diving into every little thing. And recently, I started doing work in Holyoke. They've been giving me the opportunities, and I've been grateful for it. Like really love giving back so we're gonna do a lot of different um, projects for the community we're actually gonna take these projects to the kids 
that they're playing in the backyard. So we're actually going to be mobile in order to do different activities with the kids so they can kind of keep out of trouble. That's, that's important. And you say you're dealing with the kids. Now, these kids, certain age groups, you said? There's three different well, age I groups? I work and with all different kind of age groups. I also work with adults as well who um, don't really have that much self-esteem. And um, it just builds it up and just to see the smiles on their faces. And mm -hmm. like I said, with the electrical box, uh, the smiles on their faces that they actually accomplished that. And they, they did majority of the work. And I assisted in a way in order for them to feel more, more good about it. So yeah. that's no, why I wanted to do a few more projects. No, it's not, absolutely. Uh, and and <laughs> I, we've seen it throughout the city and in different areas of the city. I, I think I can think of the one down by Mosher Street underneath the underpass yeah. there. They did some designs and paintings. And uh, there's artwork through Main Street, I think, in yeah. other areas um, that it really beautifies the city. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important that in some of these areas where you know the buildings don't look that great or the box is something just sitting there and it looks decrepit that you can beautify that you yeah. know with art which instead is instead of it being tagged i kind of want to put something <laughs> that's beautiful that'll stay there for a really for a really long, yeah, long time yeah, we, we do have a lot of that other stuff yeah. on there uh, graffiti that uh, it's not too crazy about but um but anything as beautiful as this uh, i think would be excellent uh, any any other comments from anybody oh, congratulations i think this is wonderful yeah, when were, you, when were you looking to start this? Um, around June. Around June, okay, yeah. Okay, so, I mean, if we could get fire's approval by then, then yeah, definitely, I, right? That could... Yeah, we'll definitely reach out to the fire department and get some kind of a letter or a notice of permission to do these these boxes, and then um, I don't see any problem if they do give that, that we could get this going in June. Awesome, thank you okay. so much. Super, and it uh, wasn't that bad. You're not that nervous, are you? <laughs> yeah, you did great. Yeah. Some, sometimes we get a little bit more we we're nervous up here too. You know, <laughs> I need a little bit of practice. You're on TV. You're on TV. You're on Channel yeah, 15. She let me know that, and I was like, great. Now, now you're our artworksman seen by thousands of people in Holyoke on TV, and it's recorded. So this is something that uh, is going to last, and people can look at that. And uh, awesome. Thank who knows you. if you can't maybe sell a few pieces from the, the work here yeah. that they, people be great. see. Yeah, for the donations, donated, right? Yeah. And donations, yeah. 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 How, how do people make donations? Yeah. 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 How, 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 how do they do um, that? I actually have a cash app that uh, actually I do raffles and whatnot. So you get an artwork, an art piece. Who won your last raffle? But if you wanted to go ahead and just, yeah, Will happened to win one of them. I won one, yeah. I was shocked. He happened to win one of them. I was like, wow. But um, Lucky, Mr. Chairman, I don't know. I do have a cash app that if anybody wants to go ahead and donate towards um, all these wonderful pieces. But like I said, those two are donated, and I have other paintings that are coming up because so far a lot of my paintings are already sold out. So I'm like, no. We, do you have like a studio? Do you have a place where you work out of? Or I uh, work out of my home. Okay. Right now, I wanted to open a store in Holyoke, so I'm looking into some buildings in order to get set up and have kids actually, the parents and the kids work together and actually do some work out in our um in our building i want to teach them how to make things life-size because i also make things life-size like i'm in everything right now like i'll paint on anything you want <laughs> that's the kind of person i see i see a lot of art everywhere so i just want to go ahead and teach these kids that they can do more than just hanging around and causing mischief and bring the art back no, that, that's that's important, and I, I think all of us as kids growing up, we had maybe an art teacher throughout the whole district or school, and maybe one teacher, and it wasn't really something we did a lot of, but you know maybe once a week. But I think kids today, you know, it's important to have that that art, and just like uh, sports, you know, we have people that are involved in a community that uh, get kids to play basketball and baseball teams, and it's important to get something that's going to be fruitful for their lives, you know, growing up. And, uh, you know, if they're busy doing stuff that is as far as art or, or sports or, or group activities, whether it's a boys club or girls club or girls inc., it's, it's, it keeps kids busy, keeps their minds active, and it's, it's for a better, healthier community. So Yeah, El Acuiris actually, um, if mm -hmm. you remember El Acuiris in Julio, that actually changed a lot of um, my age group, uh, their lives, and actually put us on the right path. 
Right. So a lot of the artwork and everything, some of the work is still out on buildings um, from back then. And they still take pride in that. Yeah. So that's, that's kind of like what I really want to do for the community. Oh, that's super. I really appreciate that. And uh, thanks for bringing this forward. Well, it's, uh, it's really a great, great effort. Thank you. Council, Councilor Bartley, you well, want to make a motion on this? Or uh, well, I'll make a, a motion comment? that we, uh, A, has been complied with, yeah. and B, that we recommend that the uh, uh, subject uh, electrical boxes be used to uh, promote the art subject to the approval of any necessary uh, yeah, uh, permission. For, for, yeah, any subject to any necessary approval from the fire department or the fire commissioners. So okay. Good. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay. Thank you so much. You did a great job. Um, I'll take one more motion. Yeah, motion adjourned. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Thanks.